In this video, we're going to be talking about topic 5b, addition polymers. And this is the final topic of unit one for the IAS chemistry at, for Edexcel. So we're going to be looking at the addition polymerization of alkenes, how we can draw the repeat unit given the monomer and vice versa, and then also look at the issues with polymer disposal and how we can then limit these problems. So looking at addition polymerization, you again learned this back in IGCSE, so this should just be a nice bit of revision for you. We know that anything with a carbon to carbon double bond can undergo this polymerization reaction. So the breaking down of the carbon to carbon double bond and joining up to form a large molecule. So these are examples of addition reaction because we are breaking that pi bond and we're forming this large molecule. Now, unlike other reactions of alkenes, we do not need to know the mechanism of this reaction. All we really need to know is that it requires a combination of high temperature and high pressure in order to occur. So we have these conditions in order to break this pi bond and allow the polymerization to actually happen. Now the alkene molecules in the reaction are known as our monomers. And remember, mono means one and the mer means unit, so our one single units. And the standard way to name our polymer, remember poly meaning many, and again the mer meaning unit, so many units. And it's very simply, we just write the word poly, we put the name of the monomer then in brackets. For example, if my monomer is ethene, my polymer is polyethene. Propene becomes polypropene, Chloroethene becomes polychloroethene, or otherwise known as PVC. Tetrafluoroethene becomes polytetrafluoroethene, or PTFE. And phenylethene is polyphenylethene, but you probably know it more likely to be polystyrene. Now, polymers do not have a fixed molecular mass, so when we write out their reactions, we write them slightly differently to what we do for any other chemical reaction. And this is where we introduce the use of this letter N. And again, you did see this at IGCSE, we just didn't go into a lot of detail about it. So the N is outside of the brackets and before the monomer to show that we have a specific number and that number can be any number because not all of the polymers are going to be the same and that shows us that we're reacting n monomers which could be any alkene so in this case we have w x y and z groups but they could be anything and they are then going to react in an addition polymerization and they are going to form this polymer and we show the repeat unit that has the square brackets and the N outside, making sure, of course, to show the extension bonds. If you do not show the extension bonds, you are going to lose a mark. So if we look at some examples, we've got polyethene. So we have N molecules of ethene reacting to form the, po the polymer polyethene that contains N units. For propene, we have the, polypro sorry, the propene monomer forming polypropene. Notice that I'm always wanting to draw the monomer in this particular shape, that I have my carbon-carbon double bond with four groups attached, even if these are other carbons, because you would normally draw out propene like that. So we don't want to do that in this case. We always want to have the carbon-carbon double bond and put anything else attached to it as a group. So here, if we have chloroethene making polychloroethene, or sometimes known as PVC for polyvinyl chloride. And lastly, the polystyrene. So we have this phenylethene, and this is our phenyl group, and it is otherwise known as a benzene ring. It doesn't matter that you've never seen this before, you simply just draw exactly the same thing when your repeat unit, the only difference is you're removing your double bond, you're adding your extension bonds, your square brackets and your N. Now sometimes you could be given the polymer and then asked to determine the monomer and to do this you need to look at which part is being repeated and it will be two carbon atoms with four groups joined to them. So if we look at this 
um, polymer structure here, we can see that I'm getting a repetition of this section here each time. And it's again two carbon atoms with four groups attached. So all I do is I redraw that and instead of having my extension bond, I change it back to my double bond. And this is my monomer. So this would be going from the polymer. I identify the repeat unit and then I substitute in the double bond to give me my monomer. And in this case, the monomer is known as methyl, meth, methyl methacrylate. Now, don't worry, you are not expected to know that. You would be told that in the question. You wouldn't be asked to name the monomer, but you could be asked to name the polymer. So we would just simply put poly and then the brackets. Now, polymers or plastics are used for many everyday objects. Um, and we constantly are increasing their use in our everyday life because polymers can be manufactured on a very large scale um, and we can have very specific complex shapes and very specific properties so we can mould them to exactly what we want. Plastics tend to be lighter in weight than any other traditional alternatives and they are quite unreactive so if we've got them particular substances that we need to store, we will use plastics because they can be stored safely for very long periods. Now, whilst that is an advantage in terms of the storage and we don't want it to react, it can be a problem in terms of the pollution. Now, because we have this mass production of plastics, some people see them as disposable. And it generally means that once they're used once, they're thrown away for example, like a water bottle, and they tend to end up in landfills. Now, the problem with this is that landfills are quite unsightly, they don't smell particularly nice, and they're just a build-up of rubbish. And because these plastics are so unreactive, they do not decompose. So they are non-biodegradable. And that is a problem. So nowadays we have an awareness, and you'll know this just from your general knowledge of the world, that we don't want to waste plastics and we want to actually recycle them. So typically we will separate our plastics and that most countries will have some sort of recycling bin that is available that you can put all of your plastics in so they can be recycled as opposed to sending them to a landfill where they are never going to decompose. Alternatively, we can incinerate the polymer and we can um, burn it, but the problem with that is it does give off carbon dioxide and depending on the polymer itself, it could give off some other toxic gases. So that's not a particularly desired outcome. The most desired outcome is to recycle. Now, some companies are trying to develop biodegradable polymers sometimes known for short as biopolymers. And this means that they overcome this issue and they can actually be broken down by microbes in the environment so that if they are thrown away, then they are not wasted. But the problem with this is that in order to form the biopolymers, we need to grow plants in order to make them because they will come from a natural source. So this takes up space and it can that can be an issue. And when they break down, the hydrogen and the carbon atoms that are formed can't be directly used again the way they could be if they were recycled in the normal way. So whilst biopolymers have some benefits, there are some drawbacks as well. So it's about finding the balance between recycling the plastics that we use and trying some new biopolymers to allow it to be decomposed. So if we finish off by looking at a past paper question, this is quite a short topic. As I said, most of it is revision. So we want to draw the structure of polybut2-ene and show two repeat units. So if I just quickly draw out the but2-ene, remember we want to keep a very specific structure. So we're going to have our carbon-carbon double bond. Now it doesn't specify a cis or a trans, so it doesn't matter which way you draw it. So I'm just going to draw my two CH3 groups and then a hydrogen connected. So now when I form my polymer, I take two of these units. So I'm going to have four carbons in a row. Of course, I always draw my extension bonds. And then I'm just adding in the groups. 
that are attached to my monomer. So my two CH3 groups and my hydrogens. And I want to have my brackets on the outside. I don't need to put the letter in here because it's asking me specifically for two repeat units and this isn't an equation, it's just looking for a structure. If it was an equation, then we might show that. Now, of course, you do not need to draw this part. I've simply drawn that just for you to see how we go from the monomer to the polymer. And then a problem associated with the disposal of polymer products such as polybutyrene. Well, the main problem is that they are not biodegradable. That is the biggest issue or they cannot be broken down. You can also say that they are used up in landfills. If we um, incinerate them, they give off toxic fumes. Any of those are acceptable, but the most common answer is that they're not biodegradable. And then state one way in which the use of polymers, polymers can be made more sustainable. And the easiest answer is recycling or reusing. So buying, um, rather than single-use plastics, trying to buy plastics that we can use over and over again, such as sturdy plastic water bottles or plastic bags that we can reuse for shopping. And there we can see the mark scheme for these June 2018 papers for polymers. That's everything for topic 5b. As I said, most of it is revision. But if you do have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment below and we hope to see you back soon.